this presentation, we will review Virtual Data Port Server Configuration. We will demonstrate how to access to the Virtual Data Port Management Area and the different server configurations. To configure the server, the first thing to learn is the Virtual Data Port Administration tool. This is the main tool used to interact with the Virtual Data Port Server and therefore the tool used by the administrators to configure the server. The node administrators will find a management area available only for them, where they can configure the server, manage the virtual databases, assign user privileges over the virtual databases and views, as well as enable the use of version control system. This video will focus on the server configuration. After launching the virtual data port administration tool, login with a username and password. The last field, the server UDI, is composed of three parts, the host, the port and the database. If no database is provided in the server UDI, then the administration tool will be launched in server administration mode. If a database name is provided, the administration tool will be launched in database administration mode. For this preview, we only need the administration tool in server administration mode, because we are just configuring the server. Once you log in, access to the administration management. Moving the mouse over the server configuration option will display a menu with the different sections to configure the virtual data port server. Let's talk about the server cache. Virtual data port incorporates a cache module to store in a JDBC database local copies of the data retrieved from the data sources. Although virtual data port embeds an Apache Derby database, there are different external database management systems recommended for the cache. By default, views do not store data in the cache. Therefore, after enabling the cache for the entire server, the cache for each view needs to be individually activated. For every view with the cache activated, the virtual data port server will create and maintain a table in the cache database system. To configure the virtual data port server cache, go to Administration, Server Configuration and click on Cache. To enable the server cache, first select the on checkbox for the cache status field. Then configure the maintenance task. This task deletes the entries from the cache's database that expired. An entry expires when it reaches the time to leave value. Expired entries are ignored when retrieving data from the cache. The maintenance period should be greater than the time to leave because removing expired entries from the cache is more expensive than ignoring them. The default time to leave value applies to all the views. A view will use the default time to leave value unless a different value for the individual view is specified. There is also a never expired option. The fetch size and the batch insert size can also be configured. To configure the fetch size, set the number of rows to be fetched from the database when more rows are available. To configure the batch insert size, set the number of insert queries per batch. The remaining fields handle database connectivity. The necessary information from the cache database is the same as creating a JDBC data source. The database adapter field displays the available types of database management system. Virtual data port embeds an Apache Derby database that we can use for our cache. With this option, you don't need to configure any other field. This configuration can be used for testing or for small datasets, but it is not recommended for large datasets or in production environments. In those scenarios, it is strongly recommended to use any of the external database management systems available for the cache system. After all the necessary information is supplied, Click OK and the server will be configured. Once the server cache is configured, let's talk about the next section. The next server configuration is concurrent requests. Here, administrators can limit the number of accepted concurrent requests. When the limit is reached, new requests will be queued and executed according to their arrival order. This is very useful in high-load environments since it avoids performance degradation issues when there is a peak load. To configure the server concurrent requests, go to Administration, Server Configuration and select Concurrent Requests. 
To enable this functionality, select the On checkbox for the Limit Concurrent Requests field. By default, this option is disabled, so the Virtual Data Port server will try to execute all requests right when they come. Once this functionality is active, the Virtual Data Port server will only accept as many concurrent requests as signified in the parameter Mass Concurrent Request. In addition, you can limit the number of queue requests. Select the On checkbox for the Limit Waiting Request field and provide a value for the limit in Max Waiting Requests. Now the server will discard new requests beyond the value configured for the Max Waiting Requests field. After all the necessary information is supplied, click OK and Concurrent Requests will be configured. To learn more about Virtual Data Port Server Configuration, sign up for our Denodo Platform Administration Training Course. To retrieve more information about general denodo training, visit our website.